Hello everyone and welcome back to the complete guide. Today this is part 32 and sadly it's the last in the series. Ah. Uh, anyway, as always as the cars are going round, I'm going to tell you some more information about the game. F1 2016 is a racing game which is based on the 2016 Formula 1 season and was developed by Codemasters Birmingham, published by Codemasters, distributed by Square Enix in North America and Ubisoft in Japan. The game is the 8th instalment in the F1 franchise developed by Codemasters. The game was released on the 19th of August 2016 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. The game was also released for iOS Android on November the 10th 2016. A Mac version by Feral Interactive was released on April the 7th 2017. Codemasters announced that the players would now be able to play a revised career mode, consisting of 10 full seasons rather than 5 seasons in previous games. The game included the 21 circuits from the 2016 season and in-game commentary from David Croft and Anthony Davidson. The game also featured all 11 teams and 22 drivers competing in the championship, including the return of Renault and the brand new Huss team. Players were also able to choose the time of day that a race takes place, customise helmet designs and choose a race number for career mode. The safety car returned, with the mechanics related to it revised, while the virtual safety car was introduced as well as manual starts, manual pit lane entry and for the first time in a Codemasters game, the formation lap. The research and development aspect of the game was revised to allow players a greater degree of control over the performance of the car. Online lobbies are expanded to allow for 22 car grids. The game received a positive reception, scoring 86 out of 100 on the review aggregator site Metacritic, with many publications calling it the best Formula 1 game Codemasters has created. Wow, well, F1 2016. Well, what can we say? I don't think there's ever been a game that hasn't polarised people's opinions so much. 50% of people absolutely love it, 50% of people absolutely hate it. Anyway, let's just have a look at some of the uh, classic driving views that you have in this game. It's the usual fare. You've got a couple of chase cam views, you've got the T cam view, you've got that horrible view there, nose cam view, and then of course, oh my god, and someone's just hit me straight up the Jack Jones. Thank you very much. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, and you spin around like a top. <sighs> Anyway, so yeah, there's some of the views that are on offer, as we just do a little flashback there so I can show you some of the other views. We've got the uh, cockpit cam, which is once again absolutely delicious. Yes, there it is. And of course, there's the usual T-cam and the offset T-cam view as well. Okay then, well, let's have a look. Oh my god, look. Yes, it's, you can tell it's Baku, can't you? Yes, absolutely. This is one of the fundamental problems in this game was the slipstream. Yes, it was absolutely horrific. And uh, hopefully they fix that for F1 2017. We live in hopes anyway. So let's look at the facts. It took eight patches to get this game into what you could say as a reasonable condition. And patch number three was a disastrous patch which actually completely screwed up the online aspect of this game. Thankfully not for very long before they came out with patch four. The safety car is still very, very glitchy, but overall this was a massive improvement over F1 2015. But then let's face it, anything would have been an improvement over that game. I have to say, I do really like this game, and Codemasters, after the staunch criticism of F1 2015, reintroduced beta testing to allow members of the public to get to grips with this game before it went on general release. They also got a load of F1 big YouTubers to come and test this game for a week, which they obviously did and then never played it again for the rest of the year. So let's dive into the fetid undercrackers of this game and see what treasures we can upturn. Well straight away you can see we've got a career mode in this game which is a massive leap from last year's game which didn't have one. Also there's an expansion to the cutscenes from last year's game where you can now see your crew up on the pit wall. And there's also more uh, interaction at the end of every Grand Prix where you can see yourself cheering to the crowd. You can see your pit lane mechanics congratulating each other. And then of course there's an expansion of the actual uh, podium celebrations. And there's Rio Harrianto who unfortunately didn't actually get very far into the season. But Codemasters couldn't actually change his avatar before release. So as you can see we've got a quick race. 
We've also got a championship season, which was the whole game of F1 2015. And then of course we move on to the greatest innovation that Codemasters have ever done in a Formula 1 game. Yes, that's right. It's got a career mode. Let's go to Pro Career because I'm already doing a Ordinary Career Mode and let's just start from the beginning. As you can see, there's the avatars and once again it's my very sad duty to inform you that there are no female avatars in this game. It's like Codemasters have gone back to 1929. Come on Codemasters, sort it out now. But luckily I can inform you that for 2017 there are female avatars. Now once you've done that you can pick your helmet design. Now if you happen to go for the career booster pack that came with this game you had another choice of I think about 10 different helmets but unfortunately none of those helmet designs you could adjust. So anyway we've gone on to one of the standard helmets and as you can see that you can adjust some of the colours. It's not very uh, advanced it has to be said. You can only really sort of up some of the colours on the helmet but it's good to see nevertheless. Then of course you have to choose your nationality, which is called to the country you come from. And then you can choose your driver number. And then it's time to input of course your driver name. And once you've done all that, you are ready to take on the 10 season career mode. Yes, that's right, 10 seasons. Now, just like F1 2014, you don't have to start with a back runner. You can choose any team you want to start your career mode in. But don't forget, if you pick a higher team, they're going to have higher expectations of you and expect you to win the championship within about two seasons. Hi, I'm Emma Jenkins. I'm a specialist in contract law and I've been brought in to work as your agent. I'll be working to get you the best deal in the boardroom, which means you need to do the best possible job out there on the circuit. When you get new contract offers, either from new teams or an amendment to your existing offer, it'll come through me. I'll also keep you up to date on discussions behind the scenes to change your terms or any specific goals that the team has set for you. If a contract offer does come through, I'll present to you the available offers and then you can make the call. I assume that all sounds fine. Well then, good luck this season and I'll catch you later. So thank you Emma and wow, she is still hot even after a whole year. So here's our new contract and it's my great pleasure to inform you that in F1 2017, Emma Jenkins is back and in an expanded role as well. Anyway, here's our laptop introduction. As you can see, you get uh, a news feed on the left hand side which gives you time updates, weather forecasts and the location of the circuit. On the right hand side, you get your personal details which tells you how you're doing in the races. The track acclimatization program available in free practice sessions allows you to learn the track whilst earning resource points for the development of your car. On-track markers show the key points through each corner, and the more of these you're able to consistently drive through at an appropriate speed, the higher your score and the more resource points you'll be rewarded with. Try and chain together multiple successful corners for a consistency boost to your score. So once again, another innovation from Codemasters, something to do in the practice sessions. Well, no, not really. We had something similar in F106. It was called the Race Car Evolution Mode. Anyway, we're in pro season now. I'm in my gorgeous Ferrari, just leaving the pit lane in Australia. Got to do the practice sessions, of course, because you can't skip any of them. Anyway, of course, this is going to be fine for Dave because he is, of course, the super base driver, even without assist, don't you know? Oh, shitty bollocks. No! Oh, God. Stupid pro career mode. Anyway, here's the runners and riders for F1 2016. At Mercedes, we've got Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Then we go on to Ferrari, we've got Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Räikkönen. Then on to Williams, we've got Felipe Massa and Valtteri Bottas. Next team is Red Bull with Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen. Then on to Sahara Force India with Nico Hülkenberg and Sergio Perez. Then on to Renault with Kevin Magnussen and Jolly Off Palmer. Then on to Scuderia to Rosso with Daniel Kvyat and Carlos Sainz. Then we go to Sauber with Marcus Ericsson and Felipe Nazar. Our next team is McLaren Honda with Fernando Alonso and Jensen Button. Then we go to Manor with Pascal Wehrlein and Rio Harry Ento. And then of course we go to the last team on the grid, which is of course Haas with Roman Grosjean and Esteban Gutierrez. 
So now we move on to the circuits in F1 2016 and for this year's game there is of course 21 circuits in the season. We start in Australia, our next circuit is Bahrain, then on to China, Russia, Spain, Monaco, Canada, Azerbaijan, Austria, Britain, Hungary, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, USA, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. This is the advanced wheel settings, which a lot of people didn't realise you could also use on a controller. Now look at this, I've just put the steering fully to the left, it only goes to the left 97% and yet 100 to the right. That does not make any sense whatsoever. Anyway, there it is, you can adjust your steering dead zone, your steering linearity, your steering saturation, your throttle depth, oh it's all bloody well there, it's all bloody well there and basically on a controller makes bugger all difference, no bugger all difference to be honest. Okay, let's move on now to uh, the weather settings. Yes, you can change the weather settings in this game from dynamic to uh, clear, I think, and then light cloud, overcast, bit of rain, or some heavy rain as well. Wow, fantastic. And also, for the first time in this game, you can alter the session start time. So you can start at dusk, or you can start pretty late into the evening. There you go, there's the time scale. You can also have a progressional speed up to five times normal speed. So you can start at sunrise or start just about as the sun is starting to come down. Okay, so once again it's time for the Monaco test and we're in Felipe Massa's Williams and it's away we go. Let's see, is it going to be a clusterfuck or is it going to be absolutely fine? As we go into turn one now, as you can see, oh Jesus Christ, oh I'm getting squeezed, I'm getting squeezed, oh God Jesus, straight into the bloody wall. Who was that? Max bloody Verstappen. Figures. Anyway, let's uh, try that one more time. As you can see, the five lights go out and it's time to say go, go, go. And away we go into turn one. I've got to look out for Maxi Boy off to my right once again. As you can see, I've backed off this time and let him go through because nothing gets in the way of Max Verstappen. As you can see, as we climb up the hill, and I can tell you now that the graphics are absolutely gorgeous as we climb up the hill. You can see we're in a sort of uh, sun just about to set sort of scenario as you can see. So we go down into the casino hairpin. Let's see if we can get through the casino hairpin without getting mullered. And we, well it's okay as you can see, plenty of room for all the cars. It's very very tight though, as it always should be on this game. Let's go and see if we can go through the tunnel, whether it's bloody bloody dark or whether we can see where we're going. Wow, fantastic. Look at that. Superbly lit. Well done Codemasters, well done indeed. Anyway, let's move on now and as you can see adjustments can be made to your driving view which is new for F1 2016. Of course they were all fixed in 2015 and you couldn't adjust them. So if you wanted to you can either zoom in or zoom out if you want to get closer to the action. And maybe if you're a complete idiot you may want to zoom it right in for that ultimate F1 experience. Oh my god. Oh Jesus, no, I think I'm going to throw up. No, oh God, no, stop it now, stop it. I'm going to vomit. No, I'm going to vomit. Who the hell would want to drive it like this? For God's sake. Oh God, no, I'm feeling... Oh Jesus, I've just been spun round. Oh God, I'm going to throw up. Or you could actually zoom it out and drive it like this. It's entirely up to you, but it's really, really good that they have put this option in. And I have heard from some people that actually having this option has actually improved their driving. So well done for Codemasters for implementing it. Okay, on to multiplayer now. And let's see, well it's quite late at night. Let's see if there's any people actually still playing F1 2016. Let's have a look at the session list now. And see, oh my goodness, just look at that. Completely full up. It's uh, the time of recording this. It's about um, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yes, 2 o'clock in the morning. But as you can see, there's loads of lobbies, absolutely oodles of them. Let's see if we can, hello, uh, who's this one? Uh, can we start a race please? Hello? 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 Anyone there? No? Oh. Oh, I'm not going to bloody wait. It's 2 o'clock in the morning for God's sake. Anyway, so I've joined this um, chappy. There's just two of us. What the hell? Why have we got it on 100% practice? For God's sake, I can't hang around this long. What are you? Oh dear. Anyway, so let's go out now. I mean, a false India as you get. Wait a minute, the bloody car feels very, very strange. What the hell's going on? Let's look at the settings. What's what's going on here? Assists. Yeah, that should. What's that? What the? What? What? What do you mean? Anti-lock brakes off and no, 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 no. Dave doesn't like restrictions. 
Anyway, let's go to my favourite part of the show now. It's time to test the damage model. We're in Fernando Alonso's McLaren. And let's see, as we go into turn one, we're going to forget to break once more. Let's see if we get our Matrix moments. Here we go then, pile on the beans, and oh my goodness, was that a break? Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay, that'll do. Okay, well I crashed loads in this game and it's my sad duty to inform you that the particle effects are sadly missing from previous games where you used to get shards of carbon fibre flying about all over the place. You just don't seem to get that in this game. You just seem to lose a few bits of suspension. Your wheels come off, but of course they're attached by tethers and that's basically it. So it seems like even on simulation damage, they've taken a step backwards in F1 2016. So is this game worth buying? Well, I have to say yes, but I also have to say it's excuse time over for Codemasters. They have to get F1 2017 just right, straight out of the box. Thanks so much for watching everyone. This series has been running for well over a year and I greatly appreciate it. There will of course be more later. <laughs>